How y'all doing? Juby here. In this video, we're going over my top 50 tips and tricks. If any of these end up helping you out, appreciate it. Hit that like, maybe even hit that subscribe button. Come out with new videos every Friday. I also stream over on Twitch. First tips, actually going to be on the launcher. Now, a lot of people have issues with ping and whatnot. You can actually come down here and change your servers. Normally, you'll be on auto. With auto, it's supposed to pick the lowest three ping servers and go between those three. If you end up having issues with load times, you can actually go in here and select like five or six that have like a 50 or below ping or whatever you want your threshold to be. You could also use this to avoid certain servers that may have more quote unquote gamers in them. Like your New York and your Washington DC servers are real popular. Now once they're in game, a lot of people like to use backpacks to store things. It's really actually not the best way to do it. Backpacks normally take up as much space as they hold. So you're better off actually just putting backpacks inside of backpacks. You can see here, once you get down to the tricep and switchblade, they're the same exact size. So backpacks inside of backpacks is the best way to save space with backpacks. Really the best way to make space in your stash is to get containers. Containers are one of the biggest loot items you can get in the game. They greatly increase what you can hold. You see different containers hold different things, but these are definitely something to aim for. Until you get containers though, rigs are actually a great way to store items. Most of your rigs will hold more than they take up. So you can see there, Black Rock takes up 12, but it holds 20. Belt rigs, also another one. You can actually get these off scav runs fairly commonly. But the biggest container I suggest is a Lucky Scav Junk Box. If you're a new player, everything you get, unless it's super rare or you need it real early, like a Salewa or something like that, consider selling it until you have enough money to buy a Scav Junk Box and then just save everything so that if you get a daily or if you have a task coming up for like car batteries, you can throw the car battery in there. It's not taking up a bunch of space. Next thing, hideout. Make sure you utilize your hideout. A lot of people sleep on it, especially newer players. It is great. For example, early wipe, you can get the Magna Buckshot craft. Magna Buckshot is crazy early wipe. Also, the lavatory is another great thing for early wipe. But one of the best things about the hideout is everything you craft in the hideout is actually considered found in raid. So a lot of tasks can actually be completed just by crafting in the hideout. Next, things that need to be found in raid are not worth putting in your secure container. A good example right here, flash drive and a pro kill. A lot of people see flash drives, they know you need five of them in a fairly early part of the game, so they all like to put them in their secure container. Now, if you have something like a sick case like I do, or something like that, then yeah, you could throw it in there. But if not, and it comes to having to take something out, something like a pro kill would be better because a pro kill is worth more to the traders, whether it's found in raid or not. If it needs to be found in raid, it's not worth necessarily putting in your secure container. Next tip, if you hold alt and then left click, it will instantly equip things. This works out of raid and in raid. Furthermore, if you hold control and left click, you'll put things into your person, like the backpack or rig or pockets. This also works in raid as well. Makes your looting a lot quicker. If you hold control and left click something that's on you out of raid, you can actually move right over to your sass instantly. This also works for traders. If you're trying to sell a bunch of things, hold control and left click and it'll put it right in there. Next. Before you go into raid, I suggest you go into the traders and identify things. Obviously I have everything identified, but normally these would be gray. You can either click your mouse wheel or right click and hit inspect. But the biggest thing with this is magazines. You cannot reload a magazine you have not identified. So if it's your first raid and you go into kill scav and you take his gun, and all his magazines, and then you need to reload and you get getting shot at, you may not be able to, if you've never identified that magazine. Next, once you start raiding and start selling to traders, there is a specific order in which you'll get the most money for. It is normally Ragman, Therapist, Jaeger, Mechanic. At this point, if you need dollars, you can sell the Peacekeeper. If not, Skier, then Prapper, then Fence. Next, it is great to utilize the offline mode. For a map like Reserve, if you've never played it, use offline mode. Or Labs is another great one too, because you only need one key card and you can go in there multiple times and offline. In offline mode, you won't, you won't actually use any ammo and you won't lose any of your gear if you die. You can enable offline mode. You can also enable PVE if you want to add scavs in to get some practice, but it is a really good tool to utilize. Once you're in raids, offline or online, kind of think outside the box with movement. For example, like here, you can jump down here and get down. 
you might think you can only have to go up and down the stairs but there's not many internal walls in tarkov once you're actually in the map besides the wall that surrounds the map another nice little trick is looking down actually shortens your character you can see the shadow when i look down he actually moves his whole torso so just looking down or crouching and looking down can actually help you get through some spots barbed wire is a big thing so you hear that it doesn't sound like much to you but to your teammates or to other pmcs your guy like yells out in pain so audio is not the same for you as it is for other people when it comes to your character so keep that in mind also another big tip if you haven't already maybe consider hitting that like and subscribing and go ahead and watch yourself some more uh, gbb guide videos so when it comes to moving a lot of people think this went away with inertia but it didn't you have like a power jump you can see here i didn't jump off the correct foot so i didn't make it over the wall but if you time your jumps just correctly to where you go off of your left foot you go off if you scroll your mouse wheel you can see you'll actually control the pace at which your guy can walk Furthermore, if you just hit caps lock, you go instantly from max to slowest. You can also do something similar with your crouch. C obviously crouches you, but if you hold C and use your scroll wheel, you can actually control how much you crouch. Help you get like a nice little peek on somebody. Also, you have your Q and E for leaning, but if you hold alt and hit A or D, you can actually slow peek. Now this can come in handy a lot when it comes to AI. So if you have a AI and you are right hand peeking, which is a huge strat, you can slow peek out a little bit and they won't even actually see you because you're not showing enough of your body. Another trick, aiming down sights and unaiming actually makes quite a bit of noise. But if you're aiming down sights and you hit Alt W to do the overhead, you actually make zero noise and you unaim. You can also, if you're laying down, you can't Alt W but if you check your fire mode using Alt and B, you'll make much less noise than you do unaiming. This does only work though with guns that have multiple firing modes. If you are getting into a fight, pre-medding or taking a prey killer before you actually get into the fight is one thing that can greatly help. Also hitting ZZ to drop your bag. A new strat in 12.12 that works great is baiting with grenades. So what you do is you'll hit G to pull the grenade out and then hit 2 to pull back out your gun. People will hear the grenade come out and then they'll hear the grenade go back in. But to them, it actually sounds like you pulled the pin. So they'll come pushing. Another trick, if you are laying down, you make zero noise when it comes to turning. Now you can be limited in how much you can look up and down. But a trick to break that is you throw something on the ground and then you pick it back up. Once you pick it back up, you are not limited on how much you can look up or down anymore. Big thing in firefights is rotating. Once you've made enough noise, enemy is going to know where you are. If you give them time, they will surround you. You can throw a grenade if you need to to cover up some sound, but rotate. And if you can, go down below them. In Tarkov, audio that comes from below you is much harder to hear, if hearing at all. Another thing to be cautious of, is lasers lasers do in greatly increase your accuracy but they can be seen i have killed people and been killed by people because the lasers were seen ammo is much more important in this game than a gun a good gun with bad ammo is worse than a bad gun with good ammo but with that said some ammo is hard to find so you can see here uh, you can top load magazines so i took some decent ammo a56 a1 put 20 on the bottom and then 10 rounds of 55 a1 on top you usually don't use your whole magazine so if you need to run and reload, do not run, then try to reload. Reload, then try to run. As you can see here, when I was running, I couldn't reload. Once I stopped running, I could start reloading, and then I could run. If you have the CMS from a gunfight, but you have to reload as well, start your CMS, and then right-click and install the magazine. Your magazine will instantly reload while you are CMSing yourself. This also works for healing. You also do want to take the time to CMS your limbs, because the limb that is black will disperse any more damage done to it across the rest of your body if you have to insurance fraud things try throwing them in areas where people can't get to like water even though know, you can see it unable to reach it so you'll get that stuff back another thing is do not sleep on safes safes are great they can have some high tier items in it like statues electronics also money and capital required items 
try to figure out where some of these stashes are. There's two types of stashes. You have these wooden ones right here. Then you also have these barrel ones. You can find level six armors, Alton style helmets. Some of the best loot in the game can be found in stashes. If you're looting stashes or even some of these crates up here, if you position your body right, you can hit F to loot and then instantly hit X and you will lay down while you're opening it. If you have to fall from a tall area, but you have a thick backpack on, you can actually throw the backpack down and that less weight on you will actually decrease the amount of damage you take from the fall. You will gain metabolism level for eating and drinking out of raid, but if you're able to eat and drink in raid, you gain roughly 66% more experience. If you're unable to make it out of raid, a good trick to do if your stuff is insured is unpack your magazines because ammo is more expensive than most meds. Throw them in your secure container and then just take all your stuff and drop it on the ground. Anything that is left on your body, and if you go MIA, will not be returned in insurance. Once you have yourself a good loot run, which is definitely a big thing to do, if you're going to take a scav out and you don't have enough space, pack your uh, PMC full of gear. It'll clear up a lot of space and it'll stay there. This way you don't have to leave anything on your scav. All right, well, that'll be it. I hope these helped. If you found any of these useful, really appreciate it. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, come out with new videos every Friday. Also, if you want to see me live on stream, I do stream over on Twitch. If you have any tips and tricks you'd like to share, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If we get enough of them, maybe come out with another video. Who knows what to see. But appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you next time.